thank you so much. And, and thank you to all of you for having me. Um, as I was telling Daryl, I have a huge fondness for the Somerset County Library System. I grew up in the Somerset County Library System myself. Uh, was a, a proud, you know, I, I grew up in Martinsville, so I was a, a proud patron of the Bridgewater Library and of this little tiny Washington Valley Library in Martinsville, for those of you who may be familiar with it. So I always love doing stuff for the Somerset County Library. And uh, as I just told, told Dara also, we've been bringing our, our little son now to the Somerset County Library. So the, the tradition continues. Um, and it's great to see all of the beautiful improvements throughout the library system in Somerset County and uh, what an amazing asset it is to the community. So the reason why all of you are here tonight is to talk about the polling history of Roe v. Wade. So I'm going, going to guide us through uh, some polling on abortion, reproductive rights, Roe v. Wade, and then obviously some of the most recent decisions, both within, uh, both nationally and within the state of New Jersey as well. So I'm going to share my screen, as I've said probably two million times at this point uh, through, throughout the past several years. Uh, and so as Joel had mentioned, I'm from the Eagleton Institute of Politics. The Eagleton Institute was founded in 1956, and it's kind of the practical side of the, the study of politics. We have a, uh, you know, we of course have our theoretical courses and programs within the university, but the Eagleton Institute prides itself on being the applied pla practical side of politics in a nonpartisan or bipartisan manner, really helping students and faculty and staff alike connect to the political process, both within the state of New Jersey, nationwide, and, and doing research on various topics connecting back to uh, the public and politics. The Eagleton Center for Public Interest Polling was actually one of the first two centers founded by the Eagleton Institute of Politics. Uh, and is uh, the center of which I'm the executive director for the past several years going on, I guess now, oh boy, eight years, uh, time is flying. Um, or, or so, um, but I've been with the center in some capacity for over a decade at this point. Um, I've been the director for about six or seven years. And so our Eagleton Center for Public Interest Polling has been around for over 50 years now. We've done over 200 public opinion polls on the state of New Jersey. As I like to joke on those, you know, important topics like deer hunting and uh, going down the shore and tattoos and, you know, Taylor Ham versus pork roll, a very heated discussion in New Jersey. Uh, and then, you know, those topics that we probably should cover, like the economy and taxes and so on and so forth. Um, of course, the bulk of our research is on public policy, uh, current event items, the uh, the economy, elections, so on and so forth. And we have kind of two buckets. We have the Rutgers Eagleton poll, which is our public facing public opinion poll, as well as a research service side where we conduct a, a you know plethora of research for various different entities and researchers, both inside and outside of the university and the state, as well as at a national level. Um, to uh, conduct studies and collect data on all kinds of things and topics including the topic we're going to talk about tonight. So let's go through a little history of Roe v. Wade um, and to bring us up to where we are today. Um, as many of you, I am sure, may know, um, this case started back in the early 1970s uh, or the the, the uh, building blocks of this case. Roe v. Wade was taken up in 1971. And in January 1973, SCOTUS ruled in favor of Roe, a 7-2 decision, effectively stating that there is a constitutional right to abortion in the U.S. per the 14th Amendment, where many of those rights to privacy um, had been and continued to be uh, extracted from within that 14th Amendment. By the same token, three years later, we saw the Hyde Amendment pass prohibiting the use of public funds in abortion care with few exceptions. Of course, we know over the many decades since, um, this has been a contentious battle and probably one of the, the largest pillars of the culture wars that have raged on for the past several decades. We saw uh, yet another case um, that tested Roe back in June 1992 when SCOTUS ruled 5-4 in favor of Planned Parenthood in uh, Pennsylvania v. Casey. And then it takes us to today where uh, the Supreme Court took up 
in December 2021, Dobbs v. Jackson, and then overturned, effectively overturned Roe v. Wade and their decision on Dobbs back in June 2022. And this effectively, effectively ended the federal protection of abortion rights and leaving abortion policies up to many states, uh, after which many states enacted, you know, um, uh, measures to put abortion restrictions in place. And then some like New Jersey uh, to codify the right to an abortion uh, within the law. So of course, a, a very um, contentious history of Roe v. Wade, like I said, as part of that culture wars being a, a front and center culture wars issue over the past several decades. Um, and now about 50 years later, Roe v. Wade being overturned. And of course we know Roe v. Wade being overturned uh, had its roots in conservative justices um, coming onto the court in recent years, replacing the likes of Ruth Bader Ginsburg after her death uh, and, and uh, under the Trump administration, having the conservative kind of side of the court built up um, which led to kind of a, a ripe opportunity um, to pick a case that could potentially overturn Roe v. Wade and did. So abortion becomes a very complex issue when we look at it polling wise. And it's it's good to see the trends of abortion. And, and some of the, the farthest um, back trends that we see are through the Gallup poll, an incredibly reputable poll. And uh, it looks like they started polling on abortion back in 1976. Again, this, this coincides with uh, the Hyde Amendment. And so we see that whether we talk about being legal under any circumstances or certain circumstances, we see a large majority of the public uh, agrees with abortion being legal in at least certain circumstances. Now, when we talk about abortion, like I said, it's incredibly complex because there are a lot of different ways that we can ask this question about abortion. We can ask something as simple as, you know, yes, no, do you support or oppose it, agree or disagree with it? But then of course we know that there are all these different levels to the abortion debate, all different circumstances that um, may be a part of it. And, you know, there's, there's separating the personal feelings from, you know, uh, what others should be doing. And so it becomes incredibly complicated to ask these kinds of questions on public opinion surveys. But Gallup has been asking this question uh, for almost 50 years, and we can see that this trend has remained rather steady. The only real difference we see is an uptick in 2022, mirroring that uptick in 92, 1992, about abortion being legal under any circumstances. So reaching an all-time high in 1992 at 34, and then besting that all-time high for a new all-time high of legal under any circumstances in 2022, taken around the Dobbs decision with 35% saying any circumstances, 50% saying only under circumstance, certain circumstances, and just 13% saying illegal in all circumstances. So given those overall numbers alone, that's something that absolutely cuts across demographic divides, including partisanship, to have 85% of the population uh, agree with abortion in at least some circumstances. As we can see, this is a, on the right, a graph from Pew Research Center uh, that combines all or most cases, uh, abortion being legal in all or most cases. We see that they see from 1995 to 2019, about 60% to 61% after some ebbs and flows throughout the decades. And um, Illegal in all or most cases. Again, they ask the question somewhat differently than Gallup does. Um, and instead they provide four options instead of the three that Gallup does. We see how opinion looks slightly different given that 38% now say it should be illegal in all or most cases while 61% say it should be legal in all or most cases. So again, that, that effect of question wording um, influencing results of public opinion Nevertheless, we see clear majorities in both instances, whether through the Gallup poll or through the Pew Research Center, a clear majority of, uh, of American adults favoring abortion access, at least under some circumstances. More recently, if we look at abortion attitudes across the US, we can see that those states that are bluer are more tolerant of abortion attitudes versus those states that are more purple or red. This probably overlaps pretty darn well with any electoral map we would see. In fact, this 
kind of looks like an electoral map itself, with the exception for a few states like Florida, that should likely be, uh, you know, red instead of a blue. But we can see that there is, especially on the West Coast, the East Coast, New England, Florida, and a few of the Midwestern states, maybe one or two, um, we see a high tolerance for abortion. Very similar in terms of the legality of the of abortion, those who say it should be legal in all or most cases, has always hovered according to the the um, uh, religious values, the public uh, religion survey. Um, we can see that its its lowest has been forty nine percent in twenty fourteen. Its highest has been fifty nine percent just a few months later. But we can see it's always pretty much above. Uh, that that fifty percent mark, and we can see that the darker uh, the the states shadowed in a darker green are those that are once again more accepting of abortion. We see a, a slightly uh, narrower gap here. Um, again, it all depends upon how polls are being conducted, how the question is being asked. Definitely a question in which question wording, and definitely a topic in which question wording influences the results of the question. Um, but again, we see similar pockets of the country more amenable to uh, the legality of abortion than others. And then a similar map when it comes to the percent who say at least some healthcare professionals in their community should provide legal abortions. This is slightly higher on average throughout uh, you know, the past several years. And again, we see similar states being more likely to say that healthcare professionals should provide legal abortions uh, nationally with 57% nationwide saying that they should. We, of course, do know there's partisan division on this. That's, that's uh, something without a doubt. But again, um, perhaps not as different as we would think, especially given some of those initial numbers. Um, when we talk about whether or not individuals agree with the Democratic Party, neither party or the Republican Party when it comes to abortion policy, a vast majority uh, looks like they either agree with the Democratic Party or neither party. Um, and a plurality agrees specifically either strongly or somewhat with the Democratic Party. But we can see that the strongest agreeers with the Democratic Party um, kind of mirror the strongest agreeers with the Republican Party when it comes to abortion policy. So if we break it up into multiple segments, we can see that there is some sort of split, although about one third of individuals totally side with the Republican Party in some fashion. When we break down Democrats and Republicans, uh, we can see that those who consider themselves as moderate or liberal Republicans are much less likely to agree with the Republican Party's stance um, or with neither party uh, compared to those who are more conservative. Whereas with Democrats, we see that no matter your ideology as a Democrat, you far and away agree with the Democratic Party's policy positions. This is more uh, from Pew, Pew Research Center. Um, again, we see that there is a wide divide among Republicans, among partisans in general, but when we look at Republicans specifically, again, Democrats are all one-sided, believing it should be legal in all or most cases. Republicans, it really matters on ideology with actually a majority of Republicans who say they are moderate or liberal Republican saying it should be legal in all or most cases. The importance of the issue has actually changed over time as well because of the Dobbs decision. Whereas we saw this a motivating factor in the first part of the culture wars decades ago for Republicans, this has become in this kind of culture wars redux. This has become an extremely important issue for Democrats and for uh, Biden supporters um, since the Dobbs decision. Uh, and, and really actually since, um, uh, since the Supreme Court let the uh, Texas law about restricting abortion to go into effect on September 1st. So we can see from that graph that those, um, you know, those who are Trump supporters, uh, it has taken abortion as an issue, has taken a, a dive, whereas those who are Biden supporters, um, abortion has become very important for them in recent times. We, of course, know there's also a gender division over abortion. 61% um, of women identify as pro-choice, 33% as pro-life. 
uh, much, much closer when it comes to men's identification. 48% saying that they identify as uh, as pro-life and 47% as pro-choice. Um, and so split right down the middle there for men, of course, women much more likely to be pro-choice, women also much more likely to support abortion in uh, certain circumstances or all circumstances compared to men. We see that men and women are, are both pretty much at the same rate, likely to support it in uh, certain circumstances. Men are less, less likely to do so when it comes to all circumstances. So again, complex pictures, even when we look at demographics, when it comes to men versus women and when it comes to Republicans versus Democrats. Then what we talk about, and, and we've been talking about this for decades, Gallup has been actually polling this for decades about whether or not individuals would like to see the Supreme Court overturn the 73 Roe v. Wade decision about abortion. And we can see that the numbers have stayed fairly steady over time, uh, wavering anywhere from about 52% to a high of 66%. Um, in terms of individuals uh, across the country saying, no, it should not be overturned. Always a solid majority in any one of these data points from 1989 to 2022. And we can see that it's especially high in January 2022. Um, and that uh, while it takes a drop, we can see that it rises back to, uh, you know, even higher numbers again, right after that Dobbs decision in early summer of this past summer. So we can see in the July data point, it jumps back up again and over 10 points. It jumps by double digits, digits to 64% saying, no, don't overturn. Pew Research Center has been tracking this since 1992. Again, we see a similar pattern and we actually see escalation in individuals saying they do not want to see uh, Roe v. Wade overturned. We see a steady increase um, from 1992 to 2019, the last time they pulled that particular question. When it comes specifically to Roe v. Wade, what we see uh, in the partisan breakdowns is very similar to what we saw in the abortion um, attitudinal breakdowns. When we're looking at this, 58% of Republicans would like to see Roe v. Wade overturned compared to just 34% of independents and just 15% of Democrats. So a majority of independents and virtually almost all Democrats do not want to see Roe v. Wade overturned. And even though we see a majority of Republicans who want to see Roe v. Wade underturned over, overturned under, over time, and also an increase in this over the past two decades, we do see that there is still a, a prominent, notable, sizable a uh, number of Republicans who do not want to see it overturned. In some of their most recent data, Gallup looked uh, back in May in terms of overturning, and we can see 31% of Republicans, so three in 10 Republicans, did not want it overturned, compared to 62% of independents and 80% of Democrats. Um, so again, partisan divides, although a notable segment of Republicans do not want it to be overturned. We actually did some polling within our uh, within our own state uh, as part of one of our Rutgers Eagleton polls. And so um, we see that New Jerseyans mainly disagree with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. This is no surprise given uh, the demographic makeup of New Jersey, the political makeup of New Jersey. 68% uh, disagree with overturning Roe v. Wade. Um, just 28% within the, the state agree. When we break it down by gender, just 21% of women agree compared to almost double that among men. Um, they Women disagree with the court's decision at much higher rates than men, even though majority of both genders do, women much more likely to do so unsurprisingly. We've also, like I said, we've been around for 50 years and we've actually been asking this question since pretty much when uh, Roe v. Wade was established. And so we've had numbers over the decades from the 70s, 80s, and 90s as well, asking um, whether or not New Jerseyans agree with the decision uh, to have an abortion being a private matter. And the view has really held steady for at least two decades. We can see about 80% have agreed uh, with abortion being a private matter from 1973 to 1992 within New Jersey. 
New Jerseyans have also opposed federal legislation to outlaw abortion in the past. Again, in the 70s and 80s, when we asked this question, um, would you favor or oppose a constitutional amendment that would make abortion illegal? Um, uh, basically, anywhere from two thirds or, or six and 10 to, to two thirds say that they would oppose uh, such a thing. And New Jerseyans have also opposed new state laws restricting abortion. Um, they, they, when we asked this question back in the late 80s and early 90s. So if the Supreme Court overturns its decision on abortion and leaves it up to individual states to decide, would you favor or oppose new laws in New Jersey? And uh, we see that um, we see that there is a large percentage, over half in each case, say they would strongly oppose it. New Jerseyans have also been less opposed to notification laws in the past. When we're talking about um, uh, in 1992, we asked about info information on fetal development alternatives, 24 hours delay, women to notify husband, women under 18 to notify parents. We see that New Jerseyans actually strongly favor this. So a, a very kind of tempered, uh, a tempered opinions here within the state. While there's strong support for um, abortion being lead uh, for legal abortion. And for uh, maintaining Roe v. Wade, we do see that there are some restrictions that New Jerseyans are in favor of, at least the last time we asked this back in the 90s. Uh, New Jerseyans also favor um, expanding access to abortion versus limiting it. 55% in our 2021 poll wanted to protect or expand it. 25%, just 25% wanted to make it more difficult. Of course, we see a partisan divide even within New Jersey. Democrats overwhelmingly support expanding access more than one and a half times more than independents and almost three times more than Republicans. Uh, this is, again, no surprise that we see this partisan divide even within New Jersey. New Jerseyans historically were less certain about using public funds for abortions, however. Um, so when we talk about Medicaid and Medicare and other government-supported health programs, we see that in both 74 and 89, New Jerseyans were somewhat divided on the issue. When we look at more recent polling, when we polled in 2017, New Jerseyans did support, however, uh, publicly funded reproductive health services. 77% support say the federal government should do it, and almost the same number said the state government should do it. Also in 2017, when we polled, New Jerseyans found it important that private plans cover birth control. As well, but of course, we do see differences based on partisanship once again. Um, private health plans must be covered, uh, must cover the cost of birth control. We see Democrats feeling this is very important. Independence even uh, saying it's very or somewhat important, three quarters of independence. And then of course, less than half of Republicans feeling the same. Now, of course, we know that abortion has been the hot topic for the past several months and has been on every mind, everyone's minds as we enter, um, as we're in the thick of election season right now, and as we enter the final days to election day for a very consequential midterm election. Three decades ago, politicians' views mattered at the national level. We see that from the Gallup poll, half said a candidate's position on abortion was very important in deciding how to vote. 49% say very important, 27% say somewhat important. And then today, politicians' views on abortion still matter at the national level, especially in light of Roe v. Wade. Uh, this is actually from the Kaiser Family Foundation. 54% say they would be more likely to consider a candidate's position on abortion when deciding how to vote. 42% say it makes no difference, and just 3% say they would be less likely to consider. So clearly, uh, for just over half of, of Americans, um, they are considering the overturning of Roe v. Wade. They would be more likely to consider a candidate's position come their vote uh, in a few days. We also know that abortion has shot up to one of the top issues since the decision in Dobbs early this past summer. Um, but again, this is a, a tricky situation where it depends how you ask it. When we ask about the importance of a variety of issues, we can see the economy takes the top spot, but abortion is in the top 10 after the economy, gun policy, violent crime, healthcare, voting policies, education, and Supreme Court appointments. When we talk about, uh, and again, this is just, uh, this is showing the Gallup poll shows abortion second uh, in a list of important issues to voters in 2022, with the economy taking the top spot, but abortion being only a few points behind. 
And when we talk about uh, how important each of the following is in making their decision to vote for in the 2022 congressional elections, over three quarters say abortion is very or somewhat important to in deciding who to vote for. And we can see that uh, this is from Pew Research Center again, between March and August alone, that double digit increase for abortion as an issue of importance, the economy remaining stagnant as the top issue, barely wavering from about more than three quarters saying it's a top issue. And yet we do see that abortion climbs from 43% to 56% believing it's a very important issue. Of course, yet again, we see a divide by partisanship here. We see that the economy is important for Republicans, independents, and Democrats alike, but it is not the most important issue for Democrats. It is the important issue, the most important issue for the for Republicans and independents, however. Democrats, on the other hand, their most important issue is abortion, followed by climate change. Abortion is the second most for independents, but it's one of the bottom issues for Republicans. So again, a big disparity in partisanship. Also somewhat of a disparity in gender, but um, not by much when it comes to the top issue of the economy, but certainly when it comes to abortion. Um, so 51% uh, of women say that abortion is important to their vote compared to 32% of men in a recent Gallup poll at the end of October. The trick is here, it depends on how we're wording this question. We know that about six in 10 say the country is headed in the wrong direction. We also know that the president's approval weight ratings are uh, underwater, they're upside down with more disapproving by 10 points than approving of the job he's doing. And we know that when voters are asked to pick the top issue and not just comment on each and every issue's importance, we know that the economy tops everything overall uh, followed by inflation, and then followed by uh, in abortion. But we know that the economy trumps everything when we're talking about the singular most important issue. We saw similar patterns of this in our own New Jersey polling. When politicians stand on reproductive issues, we polled this back in 92 as well as 2021. Uh, it's very important, or it's it's very or somewhat important for about three quarters of New Jerseyans back in 1992. Um, to consider a candidate's position on abortion. Uh, when we were talking about the Reproductive Freedom Act back in 2021, 40% um, say they would more be more likely to vote for the candidate if they supported the Reproductive Freedom Act in New Jersey, just 21% say less likely. So half, half the number who said more likely uh, saying just the opposite. And then we even saw back during the Christie administration, administration in 2011, um, that when he spoke publicly about his opposition to abortion, three in 10 New Jerseyans felt worse about him than they did before. So clearly an important topic for a lot of New Jersey voters in particular. Although once again, we do see that New Jersey voters consider the economy, much like the rest of the country, a top issue when it comes to their vote choice and what will most sway their vote choice in 2022. The economy at 16%, followed by reproductive issues, in uh, you know, somewhat of a close second at 9% taxes and then inflation down there at 5%. So again, a very complicated picture when it comes to abortion, asking about abortion on public opinion surveys. And of course we see partisan and gender divides, but when it comes down to it, we actually see pretty strong support or sizable support at the very least, even among some segment of Republicans when it comes to Roe v. Wade, when it comes to abortion attitudes, uh, when it comes to the legality of it all and access. So the only questions we have now are how much that's actually going to influence election day. Uh, but I am more than happy to take any questions at this time, but thank you so much for having me. So hopefully this was a, a good crash course in um, in polling and uh, uh, about the uh, uh, the hot topic that we've seen in the past several months.